Welcome to our training on the Roland BN20. Here you'll find all the steps and resources you'll need to get the most out of your new desktop printer and cutter. You can use the menu, located here, to navigate your way to any part of the training or just follow the program from the start to become a Versa Studio expert. We'll be going over everything that you'll need to know to create, edit, and print your images, clean and maintain the device, and make sure that you feel confident and comfortable using the BN20. We'll start with installing the BN20 out of the box, installing and running all the software you'll need, and loading the ink and media. After that, we'll go over the utility software included with the printer, the calibrations, adjustments, and maintenance on the machine. And finally, you'll be shown how easy it is to queue up your images, edit, print, cut, and create your final product. Now, once you've received your BN20 and opened the box, there's a couple of things included that you should check for and be familiar with. The power cord and the USB cable. Not going to get very far without these. The software package will include a utility software and drivers, which are needed to run the device, as well as RWorks, an easy-to-use design software. Also included is Roland VersaWorks, a RIP program that will get you the best results from the BN20. If your device uses EchoSol Max Ink, you'll find a Sol Ink cleaning cartridge as well as four dummy cartridges. You'll also see an odd-shaped instrument which is a jig used to insert the cartridges correctly. We'll be using these later. You'll find a wiper scraper, a felt wiper, and blade holder along with a pin and a blade. These are your initial parts to get you started, and they'll need to be replaced occasionally, but more about that later on too. Finally, you'll find cleaning sticks and fluid, as well as the manuals and operation guides for easy reference and troubleshooting. So first things first, find out where you're going to put your BN20. It's important to choose a location that's easily accessible, uncluttered, and an environment that has little extreme temperature and humidity fluctuations. Generally speaking, the BN20 will need an operational environment that remains between 20 and 32 degrees Celsius and a relative humidity of between 35 and 80 percent. Also, the printer will need some space around all sides for ventilation, media loading, unloading, and access, at least a foot, from any object on each side. Since the BN20 is a desktop device, it can fit just about anywhere. Now, before you power up the machine, Remove the retainer piece from the platen. This piece is necessary for storage and transportation, but it can cause problems if left in and powered on. Alright, now that you've got your printer out of the box, you'll need to install the software to run it from your computer. The included software package and utilities are designed for use with Windows XP, Vista, or Windows 7. Let's go over how to install them. Make sure at this point that the BN20 is not connected to your PC via the USB cable. Insert the CD-ROM and follow the prompts once the installer is started. Click on the Driver and Utility or RWorks button. While the Driver and Utility are absolutely essential, RWorks only needs to be installed if you're not already using a commercially available design software. Follow all of the on-screen instructions for the Drivers, Utility, and RWorks. Then, finally, install VersaWorks from the DVD-ROM included in the software package. Okay, now, once you're done installing the software, turn the primary and secondary power on and connect the BN20 to your PC using the USB cable. For Windows 7 or Vista, the printer should be automatically detected. If you're using XP, however, you'll need to follow these steps to finish the installation. All right, let's get your BN20 set up and ready to print. You'll need to install the ink, the blade, and calibrate the machine before you can start your projects. But doing this will give you the best results possible.
Before you install the ink cartridges, you'll need to clean the ink slots and ink heads. This will make sure that you don't get clogs the first time out and remove any debris or dirt from the slots that may have gotten there during shipping. First, make sure the waste cartridge is in position. Then open up the utility software where the ink filling wizard should pop up automatically. Follow the instructions of the wizard and choose the ink type that you'll be using from the available choices. Next, it will ask you to insert the dummy cartridges into four of the slots and the cleaning cartridge into the remaining slot on the left. Use the included jig to insert the dummy cartridges properly. Click Next and the washing will start automatically and just follow the prompts to move the cleaning cartridge to each slot so all of the ink slots get washed. After the washing process, the wizard will tell you to insert all of the CMYKMT cartridges into the appropriate slots, and the ink filling will begin automatically. The next thing you'll need to do is install the blade into the cutter carriage. Insert the pin into the blade holder leaving a little bit protruding from the back. Now, insert the blade in the opposite end. Next, open the front cover of the machine and loosen this screw. Insert the blade holder and tighten. Give the blade holder a little tug upwards just to make sure that it doesn't come loose. All right, loading media is a simple step, but it's important to get right so it feeds properly into the machine. You're first going to slide one end of the media bar into one of the flanges. Start with the flange that has the pin in it, and once you secure it with the pin in place, place the roll of media onto the bar, making sure it feeds in a clockwise direction when looking at it from above. Finish by pushing the second flange on top to make a snug fit, but not too hard. Be sure to use the side of the flange that fits snugly into the cardboard tube of the media. It'll be the side with the wider diameter. Now, place the roll into the back of the machine, adjust the media guide by sliding it so it's snug against the media roll, and make sure the feed comes off the top of the roll. Feed the leading edge into the machine with the loading lever in the up position. And make sure that the media feeds underneath the clamps here. Now push the loading lever forward into the down position and you're done. The power light will blink and once it stops blinking, your media is loaded. Okay, now before you start going off and printing all of your signs, vinyl, and displays, you should run some test prints and make some adjustments to get the best quality out of your BN20. Open up the utility software. You should find a convenient tray icon on your toolbar. Under the Adjustments tab, click Adjust All. Click Test Print and a test pattern should be printed. Follow the on-screen instructions to check for clogged nozzles. If any nozzles are clogged, you may have to clean them by selecting Normal Cleaning and then clicking Go. Otherwise, click Next and you'll be brought to the next step. The next two test prints will check for bidirectional alignment and feed calibration, which are very important for getting the best results. So follow the on-screen instructions to select the values that look the best and click Apply. The final test prints will test the cutting and print cut functions of the BN20. These are needed if you're going to be printing any self-adhesive stickers or decals. Otherwise, you can skip them. Follow the instructions on screen and you'll do fine. Once the test cut is performed, you'll be asked to enter values associated with the quality of the test cut. The cut force is the down force of the blade. Too high, and it'll cut into the back of the paper. Too low, and it won't cut completely through the material. The default setting is 50. The cut speed is the speed of the blade. Too fast, and the cut line will be crooked. The default setting is 150 millimeters per second. The cut times is the number of times to cut the same location. If you can't get a good cut adjusting the force or speed, increase the cut times. The default setting is one time, and for most self-adhesive materials, once is plenty. Check the cut shapes. If any of the lines are crooked, 
decrease the value of the cut speed. Peel off the circle, and if the square comes off with it, then increase the cut force value. If some uncut areas remain, just decrease the value of the cut speed. Now, peel off the square. There should be a faint mark on the backing paper from the blade. This is normal. If the blade mark is indistinct, increase the cut force just a bit. However, if the mark is too deep or the backing paper is cut, then decrease the cut force value. Another way to get very accurate adjustments of the cutting in amount of the blade is the blade extension that can be adjusted on the blade holder itself. By turning the cap portion of the blade holder, you can adjust the blade extension by 0.1 mm per tick. Use this diagram and equation to figure out the best setting for the blade extension. However, be aware that printing on some longer drying media has a risk of being scratched by the blade holder if the blade isn't extended enough. After you finish with the print and cut pattern test, click skip on the screen for the crop cut adjustment. This test is only necessary if you're using overlaminate on your prints. And there you have it. Your BN20 is now calibrated and ready to begin printing. For the absolute best results, you should run nozzle check test prints every day before you begin your outputs. The other tests should be performed whenever you change the media type. All right, I think this is a good point to talk about some maintenance tasks and schedules while we're on the subject of keeping your BN20 running smoothly. First off, your machine already has built-in automatic maintenance checks, like making sure the print heads don't dry out, and there's only two things that you'll really need to do to make sure that these keep working. Leave the main power on at all times, and don't leave the front cover open for long periods of time. Now, for the stuff that you're going to have to do on your own, it's important to keep a regular maintenance schedule for the BN20, just like any other high-quality print cut device, to make sure that it gives you the best quality images possible. An important task to remember every day is to remove and gently shake the metallic silver ink cartridge. The ingredients have a tendency to separate and if left they can harden and cause malfunctions. Also it's a good idea to gently shake any new ink cartridge before installing it for the first time. Daily cleaning is also important to remember because the BN20 is a precision device and it can be affected by dust and dirt. So a good practice is to clean and wipe down any ink or grime from the media path pinch rollers, the grit rollers, and the platen. Use a neutral detergent or soap diluted in water and a damp cloth. Never oil or lubricate any part of this machine. To maintain the print heads, go ahead and run a nozzle check from the utility software as part of your normal everyday startup and test print procedure. Okay, now there are a couple of periodical cleaning options available right through Roland's Utility software. The normal cleaning, found under the Adjustments tab, will clean the print heads and usually fix any dot dropout or nozzle clogging on a day-to-day -day basis. However, if the normal cleaning doesn't fix the clog or dropout after a few repetitions, move your way up to medium cleaning. And again, if it fails to fix the test prints, move to powerful cleaning. Now you might ask, well, why not just start with a powerful cleaning? We've created these steps of cleaning because the more powerful the cleaning, the more ink is used. So you should always try to use normal cleaning and only resort to medium and powerful if nothing else works. In rare cases, you might find that not even powerful cleaning will correct the nozzle clogs or dropouts in your test prints. That's when you have to perform a manual head cleaning. A manual head cleaning consists of using the included cleaning sticks and solutions to clean the print heads by hand. In the Adjustments tab of the Utility software, click on Manual Head Cleaning and you'll be guided through the process right on your computer. Perform a manual cleaning at least once a month when indicated by a pop-up message from the utility or if any other cleanings don't solve a print quality issue, such as nozzle clogging, ink spots, or debris on the print heads. There's a couple of things to remember about manual head cleanings. Remove the media before cleaning. Complete the cleaning within 30 minutes or an alarm will sound alerting you that the print heads might be drying out. Only use the cleaning sticks provided and order them directly from your Roland DG rep if you're out. Other products can damage the sensitive print heads. Also, use the cleaning sticks one time, then throw them away. Using a used stick can damage or reduce the quality of the print head. 
First, you'll have to remove the maintenance cover on the left-hand side of the BN20 by unscrewing the screw along the bottom. Now, move the carriage until it makes contact with the left wall of the print area and soak a cleaning stick in a cleaning fluid. Clean the frame around the head surface, avoiding making contact with the nozzle surface itself. It might be a good idea to use a flashlight to make sure that you don't touch the surface. Make sure you get all the fibrous dust around the nozzle. Next, clean the frame around the head cap. And clean the wiper. And that's it. Reattach the maintenance cover and close the front cover. The head will move to its normal cap position and a normal cleaning will be performed to finish off the procedure. All right, we've touched on the use of the Roland software, but I'd like to get a little more in depth about how you can use the included software to maintain your BN20 and make some great products. The utility software will always be running in the background of your workstation once you've installed it. This is important because the software continually monitors your BN20 to make sure that it's working properly. Now, we've already discussed the Adjustments tab and the test prints and calibrations you can find there, but the Ink and the Replace Tools tabs are just as useful and important. In the Ink tab, you'll find a measurement of all the ink levels in the printer, as well as the level of the waste cartridge. When an ink cartridge is low, it'll show up here, and a message will pop up from the utility software tray alerting you that it needs to be replaced. Replace the ink cartridge in the appropriate slot after giving the cartridge a gentle shake. Make sure the label is facing up and insert the cartridge until you hear a beep. This tells you that the cartridge is installed correctly. It's important to remember never to mix different types of cartridges and never to pull out a cartridge while printing is being performed. When the waste cartridge is full, you'll get another alert from the utility software tray icon telling you so. Only remove the waste cartridge after you receive this message, otherwise fluid and waste ink might still be discharged and it'll get everywhere, and it stains. Bad. Now, this waste cartridge can't be thrown out with the rest of the trash or poured down the drain. It's flammable and it contains toxic ingredients, so talk to your Roland DG rep about getting replacement waste cartridges and about the proper disposal method. Okay, this is the place where you'll go in order to replace the consumable parts of the BN20. Remember those components I mentioned earlier? If you receive an alert from the utility software telling you to replace the wiper or the felt wiper, or if the cutting quality has deteriorated enough for you to determine that you need a new cutter blade, this is where you'll be able to replace it. The wiper cleans the print heads and nozzles during the cleaning process. When you're alerted that it needs to be replaced, make sure that you have the proper Roland replacement and open the utility software Replace Tools tab. Here, click on Replace Wiper, and you'll be guided through the procedure with on-screen steps and diagrams. After making sure that the print head has stopped moving, open the front cover, find the wiper, and release the two hooks along the bottom that connect it to the print head. Insert a new wiper, with the slanted side facing away from you. Now, secure it in place with the hooks and close the cover. Now the head will return to the cap position and a normal cleaning is performed to finish the procedure, and you're done. Just like with the wiper, an alert message will pop up from the utility tray telling you to replace the felt wiper. Open up the utility software and select Replace Felt Wiper under the Replace Tools tab and you'll be guided through the process. Much like the rubber wiper, the felt wiper is replaced using the hooks below the print head to secure it into place, here. It's a simple procedure, but replacing the wiper when you're alerted will make sure that the print heads are clean and your prints are clear. When the cutter blade blunts, is chipped, and the cutting quality is diminished, it's a good idea to replace it. Open the utility software, click Replace Tools under the Replace Tools tab. Now if this screen shows up, just open the front cover and replace the blade following these steps. Remove the blade holder by loosening the brass finger screw.
Press the pin on the holder and remove the old blade, replacing it with the new one. Now insert the blade holder and tighten the screw. Give the blade holder a tug upward just to make sure that it doesn't come loose. Close the front cover and click Close in the utility software to return the machine to its ready state. Follow the instructions with a cutting adjustment found under the Adjustments tab. Okay, we've got your BN20 set up, all of the adjustments made, and loaded the media and settings. Now let's get your print cutter doing what it was made to do, printing and cutting. Included with your BN20 is our latest version of Roland VersaWorks. VersaWorks is a high-performance raster image processor, or RIP software, designed for use with all Roland print and cut devices. This software is optimized to get the best performance out of your BN20. Therefore, we recommend that you use Roland VersaWorks for all of your outputting, and we'll go over how to use it to create all of your images and graphics. You'll also get a copy of our VersaWorks Quick Start Guide and Metallic Silver Ink Guide, which will be a useful resource for reference and troubleshooting for all of your printing and cutting. Once you've installed the software, a good first step is to enable Roland at Net and the Preferences. This will connect your software to Roland to allow you to get the latest updates and information over the internet. In the VersaWorks menu, choose Edit and click Preferences. Click the Roland at Net tab, check the box to search for updates automatically, and select how often it will do so. If you choose Updates Automatically, VersaWorks will check for updates every time you open the program, and you won't be able to use the software during this check, so you can select every day or every week if this is inconvenient. You can also choose to use a proxy server, choose what to download, and when. Now, this is the main screen that you'll see when you open up VersaWorks. Here you can adjust printing settings, rip your images, and queue them using different methods to get the best prints possible, and use the least amount of resources. VersaWorks has two input folders, QA and QB, so you can have two profiles of print cut settings to use for different types of printing. Open one of the queues, and here you can change the settings for the type of media, the print width, and the print quality. The queue properties have a number of options. Layout will allow you to adjust the media, the printing size, and the enlargement reduction options for your job. Click Get Media Width to reflect the loaded media width, and the preview screen will then match it. Scale up or down by adjusting the scale box or type in the desired length or height to adjust the graphic to your needs. Selecting the Fit to Media Size box will automatically adjust the graphic to fit the full dimensions of the media. You can also select the number of copies you would like in this tab. Quality will allow you to change the settings for the type of media selected, the print quality, and the speed of the printing cutting. There's a standard and draft quality setting that affects the speed of the printing process. Draft will print faster, but may have a lower quality result. The media type selection should match what's loaded in the BN20. For example, a self-adhesive vinyl for stickers should be selected as Generic Vinyl 1. The Color Management section allows you to choose a preset that will affect the color of the final graphic. For example, choosing Signs and Display will emphasize bold solid colors. Max Impact will give you more vibrant colors, and Max Density will give you denser and more opaque solid colors. You can experiment with these to find one that gives you the best results for your purposes. The Color Adjustment menu lets you perform ink level corrections and tone adjustments for the ink. The File Format screen lets you match the settings for format and color to your original image file. In the Mark menu, you can determine whether crop marks will be printed and will display information about the print job. In Printer Controls, you can adjust the dry time setting for use with media that may have poor drying qualities. Cut Controls allows you to change the cutting parameters. Job Management will let you set the location of the input folders as well as the processing method for the job. Clip and Tile lets you configure the tiling and overlap setting. Adjust the media width, scaling, and tiling in this tab. And Variable Print will let you configure the variable text or image setting for your print job. Now, drag and drop the icon or file of the image you want to queue into the job list, and the layout window will show you a preview of the image. 
as well as other information. VersaWorks can open a number of files directly from the software, including PostScript, EPS, PDF, JPEG, and TIFF files. Okay, now double-click the job that you want to print in the job list, and a job settings window will appear, where you can adjust the size of the print, see a preview of the layout on the selected media, and change the number of copies. Click the RIP icon and your job will begin ripping, which sounds like a bad thing, but it's not. You can group a number of jobs together, called nesting, in order to use the least amount of media possible and get your jobs out quicker. In VersaWorks, select the jobs you would like to nest in the job list by holding down the control key or creating a marquee around them. Select Nest Job and then the RIP icon, and they'll be processed together as one job. Remember though, you won't be able to adjust settings for each individual image for the files included in a nesting job. One of the best features of your BN20 is its ability to cut contour lines. This means that you can cut out some very intricate shapes for use in vinyl clings, decals, and product wraps or displays. The easiest way to do this is to draw a cutting line around your image using a specific color which VersaWorks will recognize as a cut contour color. But there's a few rules that you have to remember. The cutting lines must be vector data, which is easily done with most drawing programs using a vector path. When drawing cutting lines, use the spot color named Cut Contour and make sure that it's typed properly as it is case sensitive. Cut Contour spot color libraries, including Cut Contour for Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw, can be found in the Swatch folder on the VersaWorks CD. The first step in making cutting paths in Illustrator is uploading the Cut Contour spot color library from the VersaWorks CD. Copy the Roland VersaWorks AI from the Illustrator folder directly into the Swatches folder in your Illustrator directory. Now, once you're in Illustrator, open a blank document and choose the Roland VersaWorks Swatch from the Swatch library. Create a path that you would like to cut and then select it. Now, replace the color swatch with the cut contour color from the Swatch palette and save the file. And there you have it. Your BN20 will now recognize that path as the cut path. Just a quick note, if you're using transparent objects in your image, make sure that the cutting path is up front. Setting the raster vector balance to 75 or higher. and clear the Convert All Strokes to Outline section. To create the cut contour line in Corel Draw, use the Create Boundary tool. Double-click your outline color. Navigate to the Roland Spot Color Library and click on the Cut Contour Color. You can see by the Outline Color indicator that the Cut Contour Color is now set. But there's another way as well. By simply right-clicking on the Cut Contour Color in the Swatch Library, you assign that color to the outline, and voila, it's done. The BN20 will now recognize the outline as the cut path, and it can now be dragged into VersaWorks to be output on the BN20. For added creativity and usability, you can even print and cut separately using your BN20. This is useful if you need to print your image, make changes to it outside of the printing like laminating, painting, or the like, and reload it and cut it out. In the Q Properties window, either QA or QB, doesn't really matter, go to the Mark button and choose to print crop marks on your print. This will allow you to remove the print and reload, letting the printer sense the cutting lines using the crop marks. In the Cut Controls menu, choose Print Only and OK.
The BN20 will automatically feed a little extra media so you can cut it with enough space to reload it once you've laminated. The BN20 needs about 65 millimeters or 2.5 inches in order to detect the crop marks when you reload the media, so cut the media with at least this much extra room. Do your lamination. When you reload the media, place the front crop marks aligned with the blade protector on the platen. Then pull the loading lever to the load position. Then just reprint the same job in the cut only print mode and your image will be cut out according to your path. The good folks at Roland have created a quick tutorial that will walk you through the process of creating silver graphics with Adobe Illustrator. It'll explain how to access and use the different metallic color swatches and more. I'll play that for you now. In Adobe Illustrator, we'll begin by opening three different swatch color libraries that support metallic silver. The first one we'll select is going to be Roland VersaWorks. The second swatch library we'll select is called Roland Metallic Color featuring 12 metallic spot colors. And the last one we'll open is called the Roland Metallic Color System Library which features an additional 500 metallic spot colors to choose from. Let's take a closer look at these colors in the individual palettes. In Roland VersaWorks the first color we'll notice is actually the cut contour swatch which enables us to create cut contour lines on graphics. The second color we can select is actually RDG White. And the last color is RDG Metallic Silver, which prints with Metallic Silver ink only. We'll begin with one of the standard shape tools in Adobe Illustrator, in this case, the Star tool, to create an object that will apply Metallic Silver. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key to constrain the shape of the object as I draw it. And this will be my basic element that I'll be working with to apply the metallic silver spot color. Now I'm going to select this object and right now it doesn't have metallic silver just yet. It just has a standard gray fill in CMYK. But now that I've got the object selected I'm going to be ready to apply the color. So while my object is still the active selection I'm going to select in the Roland VersaWorks palette, RDG Metallic Silver, which fills it with 100% of that color. In addition to RDG Metallic Silver, the Roland Metallic Color Library includes 12 primary metallic colors, starting with gold, MT Silver, which is different than RDG Metallic Silver, bronze, Titan Black, olive, green, cobalt, blue, navy, purple, violet, and maroon. These colors are made up of CMYK and metallic silver. We're going to apply the spot color RVW MT Silver which is a darker silver than the original RDG underscore metallic silver. We're going to select the object on screen again and this time we're going to select a different color. We're going to select from the color palette RVW MT Gold. And of course once we click on that swatch the star color changes instantly to the RVW MT Gold. Let's take a look at the Roland Metallic Color System Library located at the bottom of our screen now in Adobe Illustrator. The Roland Metallic Color System Library includes the 12 primary metallic colors listed in the palette above for convenience. But this palette really begins with RVW MT01A. 
This palette consists of an additional 500 metallic colors to give you a wide range of what we call standard and light metallic colors. And you can see that there's a range of blue, green, gold metallic colors in the palette and it ends at RVW MT25K. We can change the view of the palette by selecting, for example, the medium thumbnail view, which gives you something a little bit easier to work with when you're trying to scroll through a series of metallic colors. Or even the large thumbnail view, you may find it to be more convenient to work with. And certainly, last but not least, the small list or large list view gives you the list of names in numerical order of the metallic colors in your palette. So we have a lot of different ways within Illustrator to view these swatches and see them listed in numerical order to find the right color that you're looking for. Now we're going to select the gold star again and we're going to apply one of the other colors from the Roland Metallic Color System Library. Now the gold tones are listed at the bottom of the list starting around RVW MT24A and in this case the color I'm looking for is RVW24E and you'll see on screen that has a different appearance but certainly when you print these two you may notice a slight difference in the gold tone so it's a great idea to print the chart on whatever media you're going to be using most often. Now what we're going to do is just really select the star one last time and return it back the original color that we started with this tutorial video and bring it back to RDG Metallic Silver. Now, once you've created your silver graphic, you're going to want to know how to print it from VersaWorks. There are two simple ways to print metallic colors in VersaWorks. We'll briefly show you both. The first is by using metallic colors specified with RDG Metallic Silver. Any graphic filled with RDG Metallic Silver will be printed as a single metallic silver color. With your print job selected and the job settings window displayed, go to the Quality tab and select the standard radio button as your print quality. Next, choose metallic silver as your mode. The metallic silver image will now be displayed in the preview. Click OK. Now just click RIP and print at the main window, and you're done. But what if your graphic isn't just a straight metallic silver? Well, for graphics you fill with a color from either the Roland Metallic Color or Roland Metallic Color Systems Library Swatch Libraries, you open your job settings window, click on the quality tab and choose CMYKMT or MT CMYK as the mode. Either one will print metallic color mixed with any CMYK value. CMYKMT will print faster, but MT CMYK will print a brighter metallic color that really stands out. Next, and this is very important, go to the file format tab and check the Convert Spot Colors box. Then click OK and click RIP and Print at the main window and you're ready to go. The BN20 can also print jobs from Adobe Illustrator directly. First, you'll need to adjust the size of your Illustrator graphic to match the size of the media loaded on your BN20. You can do this in the Document Setup menu. To find the media width, select Printer from the Control Panel. Right-click the BN20 and select Get Width from Printer. It will then display the maximum width based on the loaded media. Next, open Adobe Illustrator and create your graphic. Then adjust the document size to match the media width by selecting Document Setup under the File menu. Now, remember to set the document color mode to RGB Color. Next. Select a path that you would like to make the cut path, if any, and don't forget to resize the path to 0.001 point. Make sure the print preset is set to custom and printer is the BN20 and the PPD is default Roland VersaWorks. You can adjust the printing settings by clicking Setup, then Preferences in the print screen. Here you can adjust the length of the job to fit the length of your graphic, set the media type and the ink mode. This will generally be CMYK. Now, go to the Printer Adjustments tab and make sure the job type is set to Print and Cut. Then, select Line Color and you can set the cutting path to whatever color you choose on your Illustrator graphic. Click Print 
then print again in the setup screen, and your graphic will be printed and cut by the BN20. To print and cut directly from Corel Draw, go to Print Setup, select the BN20 as your printer, and click Preferences. This opens the BN20 driver window. Here you can set up your media size. Just click Get from Printer to pull the BN20. And another thing you may want to do, if you want to make any cuts on your output, is to set a cut line color color value. Click on Printer Adjustment and select the cut line color. Now, the way it works for the driver is that you have to assign the RGB values for the cut line, so you can't just pick a swatch. The numbers we have here are 1, 1, and 1. So we'll click OK to confirm these settings. Then select your cut contour line swatch and change the swatch to RGB. and set the values to match what's in the driver setting, 1, 1, and 1. Now, go back to Print Setup and click Preferences. Here, choose Printer Adjustment and Cut Line Color. Create a custom color with the 1, 1, 1 RGB values. Select it. And now any color in the design that has those RGB values, the BN20 is going to cut. Now just select Print from the File menu and you're good to go. Your design will print and cut from the BN20. Well, there you have it. You are now a BN20 expert. And you know all the features and options available to you with Roland VersaWorks. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to your new print and cut device. And now you can get started making all your custom graphics and designs. If you ever need any help or assistance, make sure to check out the VersaWorks help tool, the included quick start guides, and the metallic silver ink guide. Or get in touch with your Roland rep. Thanks, and have fun with your new machine.